It's Saturday night. That means it's time for the Don Tony Show. The wait all week long is finally over. Get Don Tony's perspective on current affairs in the world of pro wrestling and much more. The Don Tony Show. And now your host, the man, the legend, Don Tony. Okay, I have to report some inaccurate news. It is not Saturday night. I just haven't had the chance to redo the intros. And, uh, hey, I think Saturday mornings, Breakfast with Blasi, I think they will remain for the foreseeable future. So 11 a.m. seems to be the sweet spot. Got a good night's sleep last night. My mind is clear ready to discuss all of the news going down in the world of pro wrestling. I don't have coffee, but I have strawberry ketones, even though it doesn't look like strawberry, but we'll have a banger of an episode. For the next 90 minutes, we will talk Vince McMahon. We will talk Triple H. We will talk about that petulant child. It hurts me to say it. Tony, stop. Stop. You're not a character on TV. You're not a storyline dick. You're just a dick. Stop. We want to like you. We want to support you. It's hard to support people to act like a dick over and over and over again. Tony Khan, stop being a dick. Don't have to put your head around everything. You're not a renegade promotion. Shit. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the internet wrestling community. They'll never fucking learn, everyone. You know, about 10 years ago, about 10 years, no, I actually think it might be 15 years ago, I made a comment that a lot of people found very powerful. Then I used the comment too much, and then uh, um, it got a little bit tiresome saying it, so you don't hear me say it much anymore, but I think it's appropriate now. You know, 15 years ago, I was talking about social media, and it's like heroin. It's like heroin. It's an addiction to be first, to get hundreds of likes, to make that catchy, insult, emotional tweet that gets all the attention on the person. You don't think some of these people stand in the mirror afterwards, and they're like, yeah, man, 1,000 likes. Yeah, let's fucking go. Yeah. They were drooling yesterday. They were drooling. They wanted, actually, they did not want Michael Cole to say, Brock Lesnar let us all down. Brock Lesnar's actions disappointed millions of WWE fans. Oh, they wanted that fucking moment yesterday. Some people wanted to hear it, and more did not want to hear it. They wanted to be able to wake up today Oh, WWE, you fucking ran to say all that horrible shit about Naomi and Sasha. Weren't these the same goofs that when you compared Naomi and Sasha to MJF, they all ripped you down your throat? They wanted Brock Lesnar not to show up yesterday. They wanted to use that. This is how much of a wrestling fan that they are. Instead of being concerned, and, and here's even the better part. Here's even a better part. I guarantee you nobody thought of. You remember when Brock Lesnar returned a couple of weeks ago, F5'd Roman Reigns? You remember the climate online? Oh, what the fuck, man? Now we're getting Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns again. What the fuck? The fuck? We just did this to WrestleMania. What the fuck? Why is he coming? What the fuck? That's all you saw. What the fuck? Well, yesterday you almost got your wish. And now suddenly, oh my God, he's going to walk out on that. Wouldn't they be happy? Wouldn't they be a little thankful? Good, leave the fuck out. Give it to Seth Rollins. Give it to someone else. That addiction to get noticed and to write the emotional shit, it's like heroin. And this is why so many people get it wrong over and over and over again. And until you stop 
hitting that like button for them until you stop investing in their shows, investing in their Patreons, investing in their news. The only, only, only news site that I actually am a subscriber of, other than Observer, is Fightful. They're the only ones. Everyone else out there, do whatever it takes to get eyes on you. They got it so wrong about Triple H. They got it so wrong about the Vince McMahon situation. And Jesus fucking Christ, they got it so wrong yesterday about Brock Lesnar. They all raced. What was the quote? What it, I Look, I like Brian Alvarez. But what was the quote? And he used a cute word beforehand, which means that Brock didn't actually say this. But he said something like, if he goes... I go, Dolph fucking Lundgren, it, it, you got to do it in his voice. Ivan Drago, if he goes, I go. If he dies, he dies. The fuck out of here. I put so much sausage online. Get used to it. Sausage fest every day of the week from now on. We put so much sausage in the last seven days. Who is the first place to explain to you? Not reported as news, explained to you why WWE was not going to go TV 14 in the way everybody was saying it. You got to clear it with investors. You got to clear it with advertisers. You got to clear it with stockholders. You got to clear it with everybody who's invested in the company. You can't just flick a switch that you're bringing back TV 14 and everybody's like, oh, well, that's, come on. Seriously, the Vince McMahon stuff wasn't hard. Vince McMahon, we know, we know what he is. We've been talking about it for decades and decades. I watched so many goofs yesterday ripping the shit out of Vince McMahon because of, oh, now he's going to strut into the sunset, that he's not going to be fired. He's not going to be voted out. This was my graphic. My thumbnail last week. Yeah, I retired. Remember when I said this week that last week's show is one of the greatest shows that I have ever done in 25 years? All we need is Sasha Banks now to come back in January 2023. And the trifecta is complete. Everything that we said on that show last week is coming to roost. That was the thumbnail last week. This is the thumbnail today. No difference. No difference. Oh. In case you thought, in case you thought that this episode was going to be, fuck you, get out of here. You old fucking man, you're ruining a company. You're ruining wrestling. Get fuck out of here. Let's celebrate. Cake and ice cream for everyone. Nah, man. I can't. I can't. If I was into men, would I marry Vince McMahon, even if he was 20, even if he was the genetic jackhammer at 40? No. Would I want Vince McMahon as a father? No. Vince McMahon is nothing more than a lot of these guys that are in the music business, entertainment business, sports, celebrities, wrestlers. When you see all these you shoot interviews over the years, you know, that, oh, I, yeah, I used to bang this rat. I used to do this. I used to do that. He just does it on an upper scale. If you go to a regular diner and you order this steak, you'll get this big block of meat, you know, with a bunch of fat on it. And that's what you get in diner food. That's all the wrestlers up and down the road going back decades and decades and decades. What Vince McMahon is, is instead of going to a diner, you go to an upscale restaurant. And they give you a piece of steak the size of this with some garnish. Your food is served. That's all Vince is. Vince is just an upper-class version of all of these womanizers and derelicts. And it's funny because there's this weird fascination online that only men could be pigs. Only men could be promiscuity. Prom, 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 uh, that enjoy promiscuity. Is that the right word? Women don't do that. I, by process of elimination, we've already talked about Christy Hemi. 
I have nothing against Christy Hemi. Nothing whatsoever. If she was the victim of what Vince did to her, I'm glad she got paid. But the fact of the matter is, this didn't happen in 2005 with the NDA. This didn't happen in 2006, 7, 10, 12. This happened 13 years later, right on the cusp of WWE getting billion-dollar deals with Fox and Saudi Arabia, well, billion-dollar deals, and everything else. And, you know, she, and, and for people that say, well, DT, it's not 100% confirmed. Yes, it is 100% confirmed right now. And we brought up the fact, too, that if she was not the person, she would have been on Twitter five minutes later. Hey, everybody, it's not me. It's not me. Simple. All you got to use is common sense with everything. Common sense always prevails. Do I have crazy sources in wrestling that give me so much stuff that is right over and over and over and over and over? No, I have some. I will confirm things so I don't look like an idiot. Chris Cutra, and from now on, we are always going to do super chats pretty close, as long as it's on topic. See, like here... You know, we'll, when we get into Brock a little more, then I'll get into your stuff. But if someone sends something and it's pertinent to the discussion, yeah, I will talk about it right away. But, you know, with, with, with her, again, you know, it, it, she's a victim, sure. She waited 13 years to say, okay, pay me, bitch. That's the price when you're a billionaire. This is the type of people you deal with. I'm not saying that Christy Hemi deserved to be abused in 05. That's disgusting what happened to her. I wish this, actually, I wish something would have been held accountable for Vince back in the day. You know, but when you think about, somebody was bringing up the other day, oh, there was another female, uh, um, the girl that's on who wants to be a millionaire now, is that the, the one? Uh, no, who wants to be a millionaire is that old show. The one with the briefcases. What, what was her name? Layla Milani? You know, you go back at that time and you look at all the models that were hired and how they were mistreated by a lot of WWE wrestlers. That's why so many people kept so silent about this. Vince McMahon was nowhere near the only person who was partying, having lots of sex and doing this and doing that and doing this. He just did it as a billionaire. And of course, you know, you know, look, if I, if I bang someone from the street, you know, some derelict chick that had a nice ass. And I did that behind my fiance's back, which I would never do. But if I did that, you know, and she's like, look, if you don't pay me, I'm telling. What do you think I have to give her? All right, here's 50 bucks. Here's a pack of cigarettes. You want a 40 in Old English? Here you go. Here's $75. Go get yourself some makeup. And that's it. But if I'm a billionaire and I go up to a chick, cigarettes? You fucking kidding me? I vape. I vape. So don't sell me on this that nobody is surprised of the behavior of Vince McMahon. The reason why I say thank you, Vince, out of all of this is because I have been a wrestling fan since 1979. I lived in the Northeast. I lived in New York. And I still live in New York. Didn't have internet back then. Didn't, you know, my only, you know, exposure to wrestling was the magazines, WWF, Channel 47, which was a Spanish station that we would see some Lucha Libre and other stuff. And you would get WWF on those stations as well. And that was it. You know, you would see wrestlers in the magazines that I had never seen before. Then you had, you know, TBS, NWA, you had some other outlets. And then as the years went by, you got exposure to AWA, Florida Championship Wrestling, ECW, and the list goes on and on and on. But, you know, since 1979, I have gotten hooked on pro wrestling. My grandmother, God rest her soul, she was the closest person in my life until she died in 1991. My grandmother is the one who introduced me to wrestling. She's the one that took me to dozens and dozens and dozens of wrestling shows. You know, Vince McMahon and WWE is the reason why I am here. Of course, other promotions I have enjoyed tremendously. ECW will always be my favorite promotion of all time. But that guy is responsible 
for 43 years of wrestling entertainment for me. And sure, he is a chauvinistic pig. Yes, he can't keep his hands out of the cookie jar. And some of the accusations, you know, are very disturbing. You know, but again, hasn't committed any crimes, as far as we know. And I say thank you, Vince. That is why almost everybody in the pro wrestling world, you know, that doesn't have this snowflake or this aura about themselves that Vince McMahon is evil, almost everybody is coming out to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Some people won't do that simply because they know their current fan base will be like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? You imagine, I'm not going to name any wrestlers. You imagine if some of these wrestlers, especially in, in AEW, that they went out and they said, thank you, Vince. They would have their core fan base right now up and down their shit. The fuck are you thanking him for? Look what he did to you. Look what he didn't do to you. Look at this. So, you know, there's people out there that are more concerned about how they're presented and what they look. But overall, you see all the people coming out. And there's going to be others as well. Um, oh, sure. Jericho will do it. Lots of people will do it. I don't want to single out any individual names. But, you know, the fact of the matter is Vince McMahon has entertained me for over 40 years. Only my brother and my father are the only other two men in my life that have been around me longer. And I've said that many times over the years. WWE is a billion-dollar company because of Vince McMahon. A lot of WWE superstars are superstars because of Vince McMahon. You may feel that they have reinvented themselves elsewhere and in some cases may have been uh, even better outside. I like Brian Danielson now, even though he's unfortunately injured, more than I did at a lot of parts of WWE, but WWE gave him the platform and gave him that the opportunity, you know, when none of us ever thought in a million years WWE would ever put him over Batista and Triple H and others, and he did it anyway. So, you know, it, it, Vince McMahon is responsible for WWE becoming a billion-dollar company. And anybody, any executive that goes in that company knows the history of Vince McMahon. And they know what they're getting with this guy. And yes, some executives have resigned over the years. Some executives have said, no, thank you. No, thank you. I don't want to be involved in that company. All right. But, you know, when this scandal came down, you know, I said it last week. WWE told Vince McMahon, look, dad, look, pops. You're almost 80 years old. Now, I, if you noticed, I did not pull clips from last week's show. You saw last week's show. You know what I said. If you didn't, go check it out. But I said last week, WWE told Vince, Vince, Dad, Pops, you're almost 80 years old. You know, you've done everything to make WWE what it is today. Walk out into the sunset on your own terms. Retire. Don't put this company in a situation where you might get voted out, you know, or you, or you might be asked to resign. Take note. WWE did not ask him to resign. Is anybody reporting that? No. Vince built this company and WWE gave him the opportunity, retire on your own terms, go out on top. That, Netflix documentary that everybody said dead in the water unless something else insanely bad to the level of criminal comes out about Vince McMahon, unless something else comes out, that documentary will be finished. It will be finished because if you feel the overall climate online, it is no different of what the climate was a year ago. Before these accusations came out, the climate online towards Vince McMahon is the same. The people that don't like WWE, that don't like Vince, 
or they don't like his creative, he could save some of those people's family members or pets from a burning building, and he still will not like Vince. Nothing will ever change that. The people who do support Vince, they're coming out now, and they're thanking him. He's not a perfect person, but they're thanking him. And that thanks is going to overtake anything else out there except if something horribly level of criminal comes out in this investigation. I don't know. I don't know if it will, and I don't know if it won't. But one thing you will never, ever hear from my mouth is hope. You will never hear me say, I hope nothing comes out, or I hope something comes out. Because you saw yesterday with the Brock Lesnar stuff, people were hoping that he wouldn't come back. People were hoping that Michael Cole wouldn't say anything. So they could use that as another reason to do this. And then with the Vince McMahon stuff, I told you a week ago, and what's happening now is exactly what we expected. The people that hate WWE, the people that hate WWE, they were not going to accept Vince McMahon retiring. They, he has to be fired. He has to be voted out. They need embarrassment to close this chapter. They need that. They have to have it. That's why the minute Vince retired, people were celebrating like they broke the cherry. Oh, my God, I'm no longer a virgin. Let's party. It's just like if you don't like him, fucking go talk about the circus. Go talk about something else. The people that hate him talk about this story more than the people that love him. So I can't say anything bad about the guy. You know, he announced his retirement yesterday. Now, a memo, I got this yesterday. I think it's accurate. I showed it to a few people last night in DMs, and they said, yeah, that's pretty much what he said. You know, um, here's the story for people that don't know, just to give you an overall synopsis. This decision of him retiring was made a week ago. Now, good timing for us with our shows, obviously, because of what we said last week, but it was made a week ago. People very, very close within WWE knew this. Now, right now, the CEOs, I use the word S, in WWE are Stephanie and Nick Khan. Now, I saw the people, again, sensitive, heroin addicted, you know, not heroin, but, you know, social media is their heroin. They're addicted. You know, oh, why does Stephanie need a co-CEO? What? A woman can't do this. Nick Khan has been in this position for other companies. Stephanie didn't take time off for her family and lied about it. You don't just, hey, I got to take time off. I got to take care of my family. I got to, you know, my kids. I want to see them go to, oh, CEO. Oh, fuck, fuck you, kids. Go get a babysitter. You know, hey, mom, the babysitter's dead. It's a movie reference. You know, Stephanie McMahon, even though she's been around WWE her entire life, is not yet ready to be the permanent CEO where she runs everything. Nick Khan and Stephanie being co-CEO is not a storyline. We're not going to get Nick Khan on Raw and Stephanie on SmackDown and it's the battle of is it? No, this is not a storyline. They're doing what they feel is best for WWE. And having Stephanie and Nick Khan sharing the duties is what's best for business. I have said this over and over and over again, and those people out there will never learn. You have to understand the business world. You have to understand a publicly traded company. You have to understand how corporate America works. People may hate corporate America, but if you're going to cover corporate America, you better understand corporate America. And the Titus O'Neil uh, speech that he made Monday was the prelude of this. No, it's not, hey, this is all about Vince and we're just assuring everyone that. No, this was to tell the business world, the investors, parents, fans, anybody out there that 
invests or give a shit about WWE, WWE is not changing. It's not going to suddenly not be family friendly entertainment anymore. It's not suddenly going to, you know, be in chaos when Vince ultimately steps down, which he did. You know, the message for Titus from Titus O'Neil on Monday was simple to everyone out there whatever you read, whatever you hear, whatever people are trying to brainwash you with, we're telling you. What you have right now with WWE, that is not changing. That is not changing. That's what that was, period. And people interpret it how they want to interpret it. And I respect that. If people want to interpret it a certain way, go right ahead. You know, but the point is, you look at the WWE stock. Check this out. You remember when the allegations were first announced? And people were watching the stock every minute, every hour. And if you ever watch, and you'll, you'll find this, look at Amazon, for example. I invite anyone else out there to do this one day. Go on Amazon, or go on the stock market, look at Amazon's, you know, their, the, their profile. And I want you to look at their activity from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if the stock starts at this level, you will see things like this. It almost looks like somebody in a, in a hospital, you know, they're checking their, their heartbeat. You'll see it go up. You'll see it go down, up, down, up, down. So when the WWE announcement was made about Vince being investigated, people were watching this stock. And the minute somebody made a large sale and the stock went down a couple of points, that's when they went right online, WWE stock down 4%. Friends, this is the WWE stock over the last month. That is the WWE stock over the last month. And by the way, look at the time that I did this screenshot. I did that at 4.01 p.m. on the 20th because that was right around the one-month anniversary of the Vince accusations. All right, the stock is up six percent for the well. Actually, no, that's that's for the week. The stock for the month. Let me see if I can pull it up. Hang on a second. I think I think I have the screenshot from this. Oh, wait, here it is. Here it is. Okay, this is it. I think this is it. No, it's not it. Okay. Anyway, bottom line is this: the stock for the month is up eleven percent. I thought it. I thought it, I saw the six percent. It's up 11% in the last month. More importantly, last night, the stock closed at like, I think it was $66.22. Might be off by a penny or two, but it closed at 66.22 yesterday. As of now, 18 hours later, since Vince announced his retirement, you know how much that stock has changed in after hours trading? Three cents. Three cents. Because the investors, the stockholders, the people who are investing money in WWE, they are assured nothing is changing. Let me also say something else, and we'll move on. This is very important. And if you notice, I'm looking straight at you. I'm not looking at notes. I don't need notes for this. Something that you also need to realize is that people online think that the Vince McMahon in the gorilla position with the headphones on seen hugging people after some high-profile matches. They think that's the same Vince of 10 years ago, of 20 years ago, as far as activity goes. Vince McMahon's duties have been scaled down significantly in the last 10 years, significantly. So Vince, when he issued this message to WWE superstars, Listen to it closely, because it does give you a good idea of what Vince actually was doing as far as creative and everything else. Vince sent this yesterday. To all the WWE superstars, as I approach 77 years old, oh my God, am I really that old? I feel it's time for me to retire. I've thoroughly enjoyed sharing my passion, wisdom, and love 
for the business with you. No longer will you see me smiling, docile, level-headed, calm presence at Gorilla every week. Your dedication to WWE will ensure that our company will continue to grow and prosper. Our organization is nothing without you. You are WWE's only natural resource chosen to perform in front of a global audience. You are all WWE global ambassadors. Carry the WWE flag wherever you go. Wave it high and proud and bust your ass to be all you can be as a person and as a performer. One other thing, I won't be with you, but I'll be watching. Remember to keep your hands up, grab a hold, and sell. Now, let me share some more sausage with all of you. Vince McMahon is still the majority shareholder of WWE. Vince McMahon has a say of what goes on in the future. I hope people realize that. Just because he steps down as CEO does not mean that he doesn't have influence. He is the majority shareholder of WWE. And unless he starts selling boatloads of shares, that's not going to change. Vince McMahon, I think, will go to his grave being majority owner of WWE. You can't take that away from him. If they find more in the investigation, they can't say, Vince, sell your stock. Vince, you got to sell it. That's fraud. That's fraud. If they force him to sell his stock and his stock plummets, that's fraud. Can't do that. He's got to, if he, whatever decision he makes, hey, I'm going to retire. I'm going to sell my shares and go buy a mansion. I'm going to go buy all the women I want. I'll find a car. I'll create a country. And everybody, he can do whatever he wants. That's his choice. He also, he also will still act as a consultant. If any wrestlers out there want his advice, want an opinion, they will reach out if they have that relationship with him. Vince McMahon is not going to go into the sunset. Nobody talks about him anymore. In fact, I guarantee you within a week or two, after SummerSlam, you're going you're gonna to have people like, oh, it feels like Vince is still around. It doesn't feel like much changed. Huh. They're not changing because some podcaster wants change. They're not going to start shuffling things up and, you know, t turning things upside down because somebody on Twitter doesn't like what they see. They're going to do it based on their investors, stockholders, you know, when Vince said that to Pat McAfee in that interview, it went in one ear and out the other with a lot of people out there. They don't want to hear that. When Vince is like, we answered that, I don't want to hear that. So get used to it. Another thing is, more sausage, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. You and I have talked for a good year, year and a half, about Sasha Banks and those little cryptic tweets that she posts online and expect, expect, whether good or bad, expect news to come out that the relationship between Sasha Banks and Vince McMahon will weigh extremely heavy on if she ever comes back. Whether you want to say their relationship was solid if he goes, I remain gone. Or if Vince retires, Kevin Dunn is gone, and one or two other people are gone, which we're not going to name names until we know for sure, wink, wink, then you may have some wrestlers say, okay, I'll come, I'll come back, or I'll stay. So expect that to come out next, preparing everyone out there. Oh, and by the way, by the way, I don't know why I found that picture. It's funny. If you look at old pictures of Vince, the black and white pictures of Vince, when he was uh, like in his early 20s, he actually looks almost like this. I kid you not. Go look up old Vince McMahon pictures. You'd be like, oh, oh my God, it looks so much. His ears, the ears, the eyes. Ah. 
Um, shout out to people yesterday who were ripping the shit about Vince McMahon, but are shedding all these tears about Ric Flair's retirement match. With all due respect, you think about Ric Flair's sexual deviancy over the years. If you're that upset about NDAs, you know, Ric Flair didn't even offer an NDA. You want an NDA? Here's a custom picture of my penis. Yeah, so I just laugh at people out there that are acting this way about Vince, but crying and shedding tears about Ric Flair's retirement match. Ric Flair is going into the sunset. Vince McMahon is going into the sunset. And when I see that, that gives you a telltale sign who is genuine of their feelings and who are just whack jobs, big whack jobs. So, and look, I don't think Ric Flair should be canceled either. Ric Flair, you know, what came out, he paid the price. You know, the women didn't file criminal charges. You know, if you're not guilty of something, if you're not found guilty in a court of law, if someone does not press charges and you're not proven to be guilty, whether you like the outcome or not, whether you think some rich white person bought his way out of I know it sucks. It definitely sucks. But you have to accept. You have to accept. You can't create. I saw somebody get, I'm not kidding. I, I, I should have taken a screenshot. I saw somebody get 5,800 likes yesterday writing this shit about Vince. And in the midst of it, he wrote sex crimes. Now, you know, again, what happened in 05, you know, we don't know how, if it's exaggerated, we don't know exactly what went on. But I would think that some investigators out there, if Vince McMahon forcibly put himself on someone, you know, I don't think, you know, if, if you, it's like what Kevin Castle used to say, you can't cancel 911. If it's alleged that somebody committed an outrageous crime, unless the statute of limitations is up somewhere, you know, if investigators hear, you know, this guy might have done this and this guy might have done that, you know, he passed this woman over to John Laurinaitis like a toy and she was forced to do things against her will and this and that. You think the cops are going to be like, oh, well, chief, uh, she signed an NDA. Oh, okay, forget it. <laughs> no, people sign NDAs for, you know, doing a horrible shit to them. The cops still arrest the people. You know, I mean, I look at the Bill Cosby's. So didn't Bill Cosby offer NDAs or something like that? And he, you think the cops could be like, oh, never mind. She signed an NDA. It's nothing we could do. Shit. That means that, and everyone out there could possibly be bought out of, you know, someone going to jail. So thank you, Vince. Thank you, Vince. That's all I could say. Thank you, Vince. Here, you want a little irony? Want a little irony? This is a picture of Vince McMahon and Linda with the neck brace, because he had neck surgery. You know, I know a lot of people think he was faking it. No, he had neck surgery. That was from 28 years ago yesterday. It is the 28-year anniversary that Vince McMahon was found not guilty of the steroids trial. Yeah, he dodged a bullet, no question. But pretty ironic that the same day, the anniversary of that, Phil Mushnick, that guy, you gotta. I wonder if people were just like making sure he doesn't go near any bridges yesterday. So, 28 years to the day. So, what else can we finish up with Vince? Not much else to say because we covered a lot of it last week. But I do want to segue into Brock Lesnar. More sausage. By the way, I thought this was a little tribute of Brock Lesnar yesterday tipping his hat for Vince McMahon. That was definitely a little tribute to Vince. Um, Brock Lesnar has a very close relationship with Vince McMahon. People don't understand. You might understand. You may just not accept it. Vince McMahon and Undertaker, Vince McMahon and Brock, it's like father and son relationship. And, yeah, I mean, if Vince is stepping down and and that relationship is not there. That creative, the just being able to, if Brock looks at this as a business and he loves Vince McMahon that much and Vince is not going to be around anymore, I don't blame him for that instant reaction as, oh, fuck that. 
Fuck that. No, no, that's it. Vince is not here. I'm done. Vince was not forced out, everyone. Vince was not forced out. When you, when this story broke yesterday, that Brock walked out, instead of waiting to say, you know what? You know, he's a little upset right now. Vince just retired. Vince has Brock on speed dial. Brock has Vince on speed dial. Brock walked out and had a conversation with Vince afterwards. You know, there's no reason. There's nothing wrong with him being a little bit upset that his father figure is no longer going to be in the building, in the gorilla position, in the back, spending time with him. That is human nature. There is nothing wrong with that. The problem is what you saw yesterday is the same old shit from you could see yesterday. Instead of just leaving it like, you know, let's wait, you know, let's see, cool heads prevail. As soon as I saw that, I thought to myself, I said, look, Brock's got him on speed dial. Vince has got him on speed dial. People think that Vince was forced out. If Vince was forced out, I could see Brock saying, fuck you, I'm gone. But, you know, you take a little common sense and you say to yourself, okay, all right. Vince McMahon is still a majority shareholder. His daughter is co-CEO. Triple H yesterday was announced that he is returning as the executive vice president and head of talent relations. We'll get into that in a moment. So this is not suddenly someone else's company. The McMahons still run WWE. And Vince McMahon, you know, reiterated that to Brock Lesnar. That's why two minutes after that story broke yesterday, I wrote on my Twitter, Sausage, everyone, Vince McMahon right now is telling Brock, don't walk out. If you walk out on WWE right now, you walk out on me and everything that I have done to help to this point. It's common sense. Brock Lesnar does not want to hurt Vince McMahon. And walking out on WWE right before SummerSlam, this is not a contractual dispute. All you had to do was say, you know what? Let's wait a little bit. Let's wait a little bit. Cool heads prevail. He's not going to hurt Vince. He's not going to hurt WWE because it does hurt Vince. He's not going to screw up SummerSlam and make it impossible for everyone to try to find out. And what happened? Everybody had to run to try to put their fingerprint on it. Some asshole said that WWE, oh, was considering Goldberg. Are you fucking kidding me? That was just done so people could be like, look at these motherfuckers. They're going to fucking bring back Goldberg. This motherfucker can't just fucking go into the sunset and leave us alone. Somebody had to write that so they could stand out. We had the Ivan Drago comment, if he goes, I go. The fuck out of here. Everybody had to run all these emotional tweets instead of just waiting to see what happens. Wait until SmackDown ends. If Brock doesn't appear, then at 10.01 p.m., you could rip the shit out of WWE. You could say Brock quit on WWE. He was advertised for those live fans. He was advertised for that show. If you wait till 10.01 p.m., have a field day with it. If Brock did not show up yesterday and Michael Cole does not call it unprofessional, then at 10.01 p.m., you could have a field day. But because everybody was fighting each other at 4.05 p.m. for likes, hits, watch my podcast, buy my Patreon, and with all due respect for some of you out there, you took the bait hook, line, and sinker. Everyone out there was trying to put their custom spin on it to try to make now. We were the only people, I think, yesterday that said, look, everybody, you know, if Brock walks out on WWE, he walks out on Vince. He doesn't want to do that. Vince McMahon is not going to wish ill will to WWE. He wants WWE to succeed. WWE succeeding right now is better for Vince McMahon because it shows that people could not... Remember people said the stock is going to fucking tank? The stock was going to tank? But you remember when the stock tank, 
tanked when they did the suicide thing. Remember when the limo blew up? Has anybody ever taken a step back to think, why did the stock tank when the limo blew up, but it didn't tank yesterday? It's a very simple answer to that. Because when the limo blew up, and some people out there actually thought that Vince McMahon died. There was no backup plan. There was no preparation of life without Vince. Boys, girls, I promise you, for the last 10 years, there has been tons of preparation of life without Vince. From Nick Khan to a lot of other people, there has been preparation. You remember that storyline? where Vince was being removed of his duties 10 years ago, around that time, and Triple H, I love you, Dad. You know, a lot of people felt that something behind the scenes was, in fact, changing with WWE, and it was. Not to the extreme level as you think, but it was the sign that, look, sooner or later, Vince is not going to have that power. Vince is almost 80 years old. Did people just think that WWE wasn't preparing the last 10 years? Vince took a lot of steroids over the years. You look at people who have unfortunately passed a lot younger because of taking substances. So there's no guarantee Vince McMahon is going to live to be 90, live to be 100, live to be 80. So, of course, WWE's been preparing for life without Vince. So that's why when the retirement was announced, it's not, oh, he did it to duck charges. No, because this does not keep this dark cloud over the company, and the company could continue business as usual, business as usual, business as usual. How many times here when, unfortunately, I, I stopped doing shows with Mish, and he, he unfortunately left? You know, I said, people are like, what's going to happen? I said, no, business as usual. It's not a shot on Mish, but you have to assure everybody who tunes in that, no, it's going to be business as usual. The Titus O'Neill cheerleader speech for Monday was to ensure everyone business as usual. And that's why the stock has not budged since Vince made the announcement. So everybody ran with that with Brock Lesnar yesterday, and he showed up. He showed up. It's not this hard to do, everybody. You're seeing over and over and over again. You're seeing people who it's not news reporting. It's agenda. It's agenda. Now, I'm not going to spend more than two minutes on this because I know we've already gone 48 minutes and I could only go 90 minutes today for an honest good reason. My fiance's wedding shower is today at one o'clock. The restaurant is only five minutes from here, but she doesn't know. I have to take her there around 105, 110 so they can surprise her. So if I'm late with here, I'm going to get myself into some big ass trouble today. But remember, we'll be back here tomorrow at eight o'clock for the sit down. So we can continue this conversation tomorrow for the sit down. So, um, all right. Before we talk about Triple H, oh, shit, I hope I didn't just fuck something up. Oh, no. I think I might have just fucked something up. I uh, I hit a, something here, and all the Super Chats disappeared. Oh, boy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, that's 2021. This is not good, everybody. This is not good. Maybe I could look at it from over here. Can I look at it over here? Shit. I think I just fucked something up here. All right. Just give me one second, everyone, because it would be very unfair if I didn't answer these. I could still pull them up. So, shit, this sucks. Oh, crap, this sucks. Sorry, everybody. Let me just fix something here. July, July, July. Thank God it's only a couple, but I definitely need to answer them. Okay. Well, I may have to answer them tomorrow. Oh, you know what? I know where I could find them. I know where I could find them. Let me just let me just pull this up. Take me two seconds, everyone. 
I got it here. Unfortunately, the ones that came in. Rockstar Wolfie, welcome, my friend. Oh, that's not good. Ah, that's what happens. You hit one wrong button and everything goes awry, but that's okay. I found it. Okay. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Come on. Shit. This sucks. I can't, I, I don't, I can't find it. I, all right. You know what? Yeah, we're going to have to, you know what? I Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll be able to find them while we're doing this. Let's talk about Triple H for a minute. All right. Now, with Vince retiring, it pissed me off because I originally had this thumbnail for tonight. So much for erasing his legacy. WWE has announced that effective immediately, Triple H, Paul Levesque, will resume his activities as executive uh, vice president and head of talent relations. So much for ruining his legacy, so much for them treating him like a clown, treating him like a dunce. You know, I hate to bring this up. You remember what happened with Keith Lee last year? I still remember that, and it was a very big deal. Keith Lee, he was supposed to be in Elimination Chamber, I believe. And he didn't appear. And I remember a lot of websites saying that WWE has nothing for Keith Lee, that uh, creatively they're ruining his character and this, this and that. They just had, they have nothing for him. And they took him off TV and WWE doesn't know what the fuck to do with Keith Lee, this, this and that. And all of these reports were going around. And I remember coming on the show and telling everyone, like, look, I heard Keith Lee, there's some health condition going on. Don't know if it's COVID or not. But I'm not going to go any further than that because we're not sure what his health issue is, but it's kind of serious. Still, people were, WWE has nothing for Keith Lee. Creatively, they have not, nothing, nothing. And this just s snowballed into something huge. It ends up Keith Lee had a major heart problem. And he had COVID, and things got very, very complicated. And he was in a hospital, and it was so serious that it could have been a life or death situation. And I will never forget, I will never forget Mia Yim going on social media and telling everyone, look, everybody, you know, can we finally now, you know, move on and can you please respect our privacy? And she pretty much was addressing everyone who were reporting bullshit. And by the way, I did find the, su the super chats. I did find them. So we will definitely get into them in a second. But you thought that they would have learned with the Keith Lee situation because they got it horribly wrong. And this was a guy who was on his deathbed and everybody else was doing these thumbnails that creative has nothing for Keith Lee and he's going to be released and this and that. Meanwhile, he's on his deathbed. People don't learn. The Triple H stuff, for the last year, you had people labeling him a clown, labeling him a dunce, taking away all of his powers, firing all of his favorites, releasing all of his favorites as if the WWE machine, the stock, the investment generating revenue was less important and was more important was to kill anything that Triple H created. And I remember coming on here and I said, guys, gals, when did Triple H not become a McMahon anymore? Since when is Triple H an outsider? Since when is Triple H not part of WWE? They're making it seem like they're trying to push someone out. Do you remember Triple H to AEW? Triple H, leave, go to AEW, this and that. Oh, Stephanie, don't give him, uh, how do I say it nicely? She don't give him the nookie. Is that it? The nookie? She don't give him nothing. No more. She don't give him pie. You know, like everybody's painting Triple H as a clown. And then you saw NXT changing. And I said this for two plus years. WWE needed to go back to developmental with NXT. They took their focus off of it. They're not going to pay Adam Cole 300 grand. They're not going to pay this person 200 grand. They're not going to pay this wrestler 150, uh, 295,000. 
have NXT be this overbloated, you know, 500, 600, 700,000 viewership show. NXT's ratings are very close to what they were with all of these other guys that used to be in the company. No, you want to build the stars of tomorrow. And that's exactly what ended up happening. And because so many people got it so wrong, it's like, oh, black and gold is dead. Sure, black and gold is dead. Same reason why the word takeover is dead. They don't want people to mistake today's NXT from the NXT from a couple of years ago. Period. It's why people don't compare NXT 2.0 to Great American Bash two years ago. That's why they did this. It's exactly why they did this. So Triple H, while all this is going on, now we learn Triple H had, what, quadruple heart surgery? My father had the same thing, Widowmaker. Remember Widowmaker? I kept bringing it up on my dad. They kept saying to him, Widowmaker, Widowmaker, Widowmaker. That's not just a horrible WWF gimmick. Widowmaker is what makes wives widows. And Triple H had what my dad had. My dad had his surgery 18 months ago, and my dad is still not right, not completely right. So you got this guy in the hospital on his deathbed having this surgery, and people think that, oh, he could just come back, revive NXT, do this, do that, have 10,000 duties and everything, you know, because everybody doesn't look at it in common sense human standpoint. They look at it as just names. So Triple H, he's on his deathbed, and people are like, oh, they're pushing Triple H out. Oh, yeah, how many people said that WWE gave Triple H the, the heart attacks? These people are just wild with their shit, man. So when they announced yesterday that Triple H was returning as EVP and head of talent relations, he's his. let me make this clear, his job duties are still a lot less than what they were two, three years ago. Not because they're taking away his legacy, but because he is fucking, he has heart issues. He's not completely 100% back. He could feel like it is, but that's not the case. Triple H is going to take years to be able to build up that stamina, and it may never come back. That's why he left his boots in the ring. It's not even possible for him to, to even chance it again. He's not going to put his life on the line as a dad, as a husband, and as an executive. So Triple H back, that's an awesome thing. But let's keep it in perspective. Let's keep it in perspective. His heart surgery was only a year ago, you know, about that. And it's going to take a lot longer for him to get back in the full swing of things. All right. Uh, let's get into a couple of super chats. No, in no particular order. Justin, well, wait a minute. Mish, stop it. She's only popular and over because of looks. What the hell is this? That's not, okay, this is not good. Why is this not, all right, so you know what? I'm going to have to read them. I'm going to have to read, that's that's wild because I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> that's, oh, you know what? Maybe I could re reload it. No, okay. Super chats are all screwed up right now. All right. We have one from Steve Joseph. Thank you very much, Steve. When you are a CEO, of a company, you cannot sleep with your employees. That's policy in all types of business in the United States. You are 100% correct. But it's not criminal. Ethically, it's immoral. Um, but it's not criminal. Uh, sure, WWE does not condone that. And, you know, Vince McMahon could have been voted out because of it. We never said that he would not be voted out. But... WWE said to Vince, Vince, look, go out on your own terms. Go out on your own terms. This could all boil, boil over. This could all end up being a nothing burger and you could stay. But you're almost 80. Go out the right way. You know, it, trust me, that went through his head. Think of it like this. Vince don't have to worry about NDAs anymore. Right now, Vince could be getting laid somewhere. I hate that I don't want to see that visual, but 
he could be getting laid somewhere right now. So, you know, it's funny. I just selected another super chat and uh, other things are popping up. So it's, I, I, maybe it's a technical glitch on YouTube's part, but I still have them here. Ronald Ciulo, much love, my friend, sent 100 spot. Every time I hit a big story correct, he sends 100, which I appreciate more than you can imagine, Ronnie. He says, Tony, stop getting so much crap right. I'm getting broke over here. I'm getting broke over here. You don't have to do that, my friend. It is always appreciated, and you know it goes to right causes, but uh, thank you for that. You know, I always try to be accurate for everyone here. I don't give a shit about a 1,000 likes. And I, I'm not saying I don't give a shit about a 1,000 viewers. Of course I do. But I give a shit about each and every one of you to take the time, whether you watch the shows, listen to the shows, subscribe to Patreon, don't subscribe to Patreon. Whatever you do, if you invest in what I do, I owe you the respect of giving you the right information, to give you my opinions, to tell you straight up why this is. Like I said last week, you know, I try to explain to you why this piece of paper is white. And you will have people out there, if somebody says this piece of paper is black, you see it in, that's why every, you realize how much sausage we got right in the last seven days before anyone else. I purposely write it five minutes in. Jarvis Scott, welcome to the family. I write this five minutes after news break because I want to be first. That's the idea of doing a sausage right now, to be first. So when another website is trying to type something up like ringside news, ringside fools, they can be like, fuck, he just wrote it, that asshole. That's why we get no love whatsoever. But you'll get one of those jerk offs that'll say, breaking news, this piece of paper is black. And what do the other journalists do? They don't say, um, uh, Ray, uh, this is the sheet of paper is white. No. They will do this. Ray Schmuck is reporting that this sheet of paper is black. Am I wrong? All right. Let's, oh, God. This is, this is not good. They're all in disarray right now. CJ Rocks, what do I think Vince will do now? Consider he's done nothing but work his whole life. You can't see him sitting around the house doing nothing. Okay. I think Vince may invest in a, another company. I think Vince will make some investments somewhere, some, somewhere else. Um, I will tell you something that I was thinking about, and it's not pleasant, but I could see it. If Vince passes, if Vince passes within the next year or two, I guarantee you people will say that Vince died because of a broken heart that Vince wanted to, you know, eat, sleep, shit, WWE until he died. Oh, very cool. Did this just fix itself? Oh, very cool. Look at that. Ah, oh, awesome. So it was a YouTube glitch. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. It was a YouTube glitch. Awesome. Um, I see Vince investing in some outside ventures. Hopefully nothing that says the letters XFL. Um, I think Vince will think of Pat Patterson in his final years working behind the scenes at WWE. I think Vince will show up on occasion. He's not an enemy. I think Vince will still, you know, keep his DMs open for a lot of the wrestlers. I think Vince will remain busy. Um but I still think that his heart is broken. But understand something. And, I, and as much as we appreciate Vince and we thank Vince, let's also say this. You know, Vince did this to himself. If Vince would have just kept his penis in his pants, you know, and have a relationship with someone outside of WWE, maybe the reason why he didn't have relations outside of WWE is because he wanted to you know, be involved with someone that he knew, someone that he could trust, someone that was within the confines of WWE. I don't know. I can never understand why someone, you know, I mean, look, you want pussy that bad, go on OnlyFans or go on something and, you know, get your rocks off in the privacy of your own home. 
guarantee you five minutes later, you know, you don't think about it anymore. I, but I just think I'm, I'm with you. Vince will not just hang tight and do nothing. So, uh, Kavan Lewis, thank you, Vince. Coke head con. Oh, trust me. We got 25 minutes left, so we got to speed it up a little bit. We might not be able to cover every little thing tonight, but we will definitely get into Tony Khan's tweet. So thank you, Kavan, for that. The Clan Malloy, do I think a lot of the Vince-isms are going to slowly go away? Yelling at the commentary, banned words, wrestlers watching TV sideways. Yeah, I do. Um, yesterday on SmackDown, there was a little, you know, to me, I can understand why people thought it was a big deal. You know, the New Day were at ringside during the Viking Raiders match. And, um, you know, first off, you know, this is what Xavier Woods was wearing. I mean, you know, to make fun of the Viking Raiders, obviously. But when he talked about the Viking Raiders, you know, a little reference to Ring of Honor and I think IWGP. You know, Ring of Honor is owned by Tony Khan. And, uh, you know, that obviously a lot of people was like, oh, my God, did you hear what Xavier Woods just said? Um, yeah, I mean, you'll see some things change, but as far as yelling at the commentary and stuff like, nah, it's some of that is natural energy. So you will see some things tweaked a little bit. I expect one or two of Vince McMahon guys end up, you know, leaving the company, uh, whether they're asked to resign or they leave on it. Look, I don't think anybody is going to want to leave on their own accord. You know, if I'm Kevin Dunn or someone else, if I'm getting paid big time and I have that much power, why would I leave it even if Vince were to resign? You know, so I don't see some of these guys leaving. I, I put it this way. I expect to see severance packages. Get used to that word, severance, pa two words, severance packages. Kevin Dunn is not yet. He's not done yet. But... Of course, people will jump the gun and start saying that, you know, they're just assuming, oh, he must be next. He has to be next. This is agenda-based news, not news. People have their agendas. That's why they never in a million years thought Vince was going to retire. They thought Vince was going to be voted out of office. That's what they wanted. They didn't want to report that Vince was going to retire. They, were going to re they wanted to report that Vince was going to be voted out of office because that's the only outcome they would accept. Triple H, they, there was nothing to report that he was being buried, erased of his legacy and everything like that. It's agenda-based. They wanted to report based on what they wanted it to appear. And the same thing now with Kevin Dunn. So they want Kevin Dunn removed. So they, agenda-based, they're going to report it like that. Oh, Kevin Dunn, he's next. You heard it here, breaking news, he's here next. No, oh, that's their agenda-based news. That's what you read most of the time. Nero Fay says DT for CEO. Oh, hell no. No. Not interested. Not interested. I'm happy with what I do, and I'm not going anywhere. Thank you, though. Nintendo was dumb to let Rareware go. Okay? Just a random fun fact. Isn't wrestling related, but Chris Hansen is going to get involved in the Chris Chan incest story. It's going to be good. Okay, you know, I, I do watch some Chris, Chris Hansen videos on YouTube once in a while. They have the montage of people entering the room. Sit down, have a seat. <laughs> he, he has a weird, look, he fights the good fight. But it always felt like he had this weird infatuation, like he loved the gotchas. You know that, you know, he took a nice hot shower after he fucking belittled these people. And they deserve belittling. Chris Hansen, he's gangster. He is gangster. Chris Cutra would have loved to see the looks on the faces with their finger on the tweet button waiting for SmackDown to end with no Brock burial, only to die inside right at the end. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I'm not going to lie. I Actually, anybody who was in a watch party yesterday, I swear to God, people were alive right now. You were in a watch party. Ever. I know Rams fan is live. When Theory was in the ring, after he beat down Moss, I said, okay, when is Brock's music going to hit? You looked at the time. There was still three, four minutes left, five minutes left. You knew somebody was coming out. Who else was going to come out? Roman? Why? Who's going to come out? To come to the aid of Moss. 
You know, it was Brock. And honestly, when they were name dropping Brock early in SmackDown, that should have been a telltale sign that he was going to be back. Should have been a telltale sign that he was going to be back. So, but, um, hey, then, Rod, I'll thank you again. Thank you again. All right. We got about 20 minutes left. Let's talk about the petulant child. And I swear to you, I got to open up because I know a lot of you out there are AEW fans. I am an AEW fan. I'm not going to stop covering AEW, support AEW because of this child. And there is some of what I do like about Tony Khan. I love his energy. I love his passion. I love his dedication. I love that he cares about wrestling this much. I said it on a watch party two, three weeks ago. I said, you know what? As much as Tony Khan may ruffle some feathers, you know, you want someone with that kind of money to be that big of a fan in pro wrestling because that is someone who cares about wrestling so much that he may actually take a bath and lose money out of it, but he'll still keep it going. Someone who does not care about wrestling as much, maybe like Sinclair or maybe uh, Panda Energy, you know, if they're not deep, deep, hardcore wrestling fans, you know, they're going to just pick up, look at AOL Time Warner. They weren't, uh, nobody important there other than Turner was wrestling fan, really. And they looked at the bottom line like, ah, eh, let's just get out of this. So that's why I do appreciate Tony Khan. But he is a petulant child when he does stuff like this. He writes on Twitter yesterday after Vince announces his retirement, not even a half hour later. He says, thank you. Thanks to you wrestling fans and your great support of AEW. I'm grateful to now be the longest tenured CEO in pro wrestling. Thank you very much for every single person who watches AEW TV. Now, yes, I know people will bring up Billy Corgan. People will bring up other promoters, other places. I get it. You impact wrestling. They have some people, but like, why even say that? Why even say that? I mean, I don't want to get really personal with this guy, but no wonder why he doesn't get laid. You know, no, I, we don't hear anything about him. You know, whether he likes his M&Ms with peanuts or plain, you know, you never hear this guy having a relationship with someone because I would turn around and say, how fucking old are you? You know, look at how much money you got and you act like this. This is a petulant child a petulant child, you know, it's just, he looks like a petulant child when he does this. And this is not even a character. It's not even storyline. Remember some of the, you know, the tirades that he did in the past. This is not someone playing a character on TV. This is someone who is very immature, has a lot of money, passionate about wrestling, but is extremely immature. Without a doubt. I like Tony Khan. We don't need stuff like this, Tony. You know, I, look, I'm not comparing myself to Tony Khan, but I brought this up before. Back in the mid-2000s, I used to make fun of every podcaster out there. I used to put everybody down. We used to do skits about podcasts. I used to call them all goofs, morons, jerk-offs. I would say even worse. And one day I started, it hit me. I'm like, you know what? I want people to tune in to me because I'm good, not because they're bad. Like I kept telling everyone why the other shows were bad. And I was like, you know what? But if I'm not good, then I'm going to just be as bad as them. And why would they tune in to me? And once I started thinking to myself, this was actually 2008. Once I decided, you know what? I want people to tune in to me because I'm good, not because they're bad. You can address people who are bad. But you also can't forget to explain why you're good. And Tony Khan is that immature, you know, always putting down others, especially in WWE corporate. But then, you know, it's almost like, and I know people hate when I use the B word, it's almost like a bipolar that he'll do an interview next week. Oh, yeah, yeah, if the opportunity, I would work with WWE. Well, now it would mean different because Vince stepped down. But still, you know, like in one week he'll say this, and in one week he'll say this. I just think he's ch immature. I just think he's immature. I don't think he means like anything harsh about it, but this, there's a climate online amongst AEW towards non-AEW fans that is not good. It is not good. Their Dynamite rating did 9-10 
this week with the Bob Wire Anywhere match. Decent number, decent number. Um, but still, you know, you want people to feel, you know, like I said, when I used to go to ECW, I came from New York. I didn't feel nervous because I was coming from New York, going into the ECW arena in South Philly. You know, I walked in there and everybody was like, hey, put your feet in the water. The water's warm. Come hang out. You know, I, you want to, it's, it's funny for a promotion that promotes so much inclusion. You know, it's like, if you're this, you're included. If this, you're included. Yeah. But WWE, oh, fuck no. Or if you're Hulk Hogan, brother, brother. All right. Got some other news we have to, we have to get into. We were supposed to get the Beachwear Collection, Maximum Male Models. We did not get that yesterday. We did find out who Maxine Dupree is, but yesterday it went from this to this. Sophia Cromwell, the young lady that was with Von Wagner, and Robert Stone, she is Maxine Dupree. If you noticed the promo yesterday, and they are hyping up the Beachwear collection next week, Max Dupree is nowhere to be found. He is not even on the advertisement for next week. So the question is, what is going to happen with Max Dupree? Well, word has it that Max Dupree may be done with the Max Dupree character. A lot of people think he may be returning as L.A. Knight. Um, I'm not sure about that. You know, a lot of people have been wanting L.A. Knight, Max Dupree to wrestle. And I said since day one that, you know, think Piper, someone who wrestles, someone who will also be a manager. So now if they're going to have Max Dupree wrestle, why does he have to change his name? I mean, look, I would prefer L.A. Knight. It just sounds better. But, you know, unless we're going to get a Judgment Day Edge situation, not as violent, but unless Maxine Dupree says, brother, you're no longer part of Maximum Male Models. I now own Maximum Male Models. Maybe we get the split screen simulcast. And maybe Max could be like Vince, like, you know, instead of Shane, you know, the name says Dupree, but it's not Max Dupree, it's Maxine Dupree. We're not going to get anything like that. Um, let's see what happens next week. But if they bring him back as LA Knight, I'm fine with it. But guess what? If Max Dupree is back as a wrestler and he's Max Dupree, I'm fine with that as well. I'm fine with it as well. So I like, I'm going to be straight up with everyone, I like the idea of not having Max Dupree with this anymore. It, it, that means Maximum Male Miles is closed. It's M&M. It's almost like, you know, M&M, not M N M like, you know, Mars and, and you know, in the past, and Mercury, but now you have the you know Mansois, Massé, and Maxine. So she will be the valet manager of Massé and Mansois. That means we'll probably not have any additional members. But uh, so that is the Sophia Cromwell uh, from NXT. She is now Maxine Dupree, and in fact, I actually. Got this. This is her page now on social media. So, uh, Gregory's asking, how much do we think we'll learn about the direction and difference in booking we'll see moving forward from SummerSlam? You're not going to see much different. Vince's duties were scaled back quite a bit over the years. You're not going to see much different. You will see some changes. No question. You're not going to see much different. Like I said last week with the TV 14, way overblown. SummerSlam will be TV 14. Good. That's not USA Network. That's not advertisers. That is a premium live event. That's like you watch, that, look, it's like the Beavis and Butthead movie. We watch Beavis and Butthead on TV and we enjoy it. But you don't get much vulgarity. You get some, you know, but on the movie, now you hear some cursing. 
you watch Star Trek. I used to be a big fan of Star Trek. I wasn't alive in the 60s, but I was a big fan of the old Star Trek. Then when the movies started to come out, you would actually hear an expletive. You know, so yeah, when you have a premium live event, treat it like a TV show, now having a movie. It's not hard to figure out. All right, what else do we want to get into? We got about 10 minutes left. All right. Um, yesterday on SmackDown, we had uh, Stephanie come out. Just simple. I wrote it on my Twitter, Sausage. I said, guys, gals, get ready for the biggest thank you Vince chant. And that was before SmackDown aired. And that's exactly what happened. Stephanie came out, thank you Vince. And she quietly went away. Street Profits come out. They are confronted by Theory, the Usos. For some reason, Mad Cat Moss is now thrown into this mix. All right, whatever. Sets up a six-man tag later on in the night. Shinsuke Nakamura losing to Gunther. And my friends in the watch party essay will vouch for me on this one. You know, Gunther had to get involved in the match for uh, Ludwig Kaiser to win. And after the match was over, um, you know, they were celebrating. And, you know, I kept saying in the chat room, you got to chop him anyway. You got to chop him anyway. You got to chop him anyway. And then... He closes his eye. Even said it in the watch party. He said, all right, close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Give that look like you got to take a dump and it won't come out. And then Gunther goes to chop him. And he's like, nah, I'm only kidding. And I was like, no, you still got to chop him. He chopped that son of a bitch anyway. I loved it. I loved it. Gunther don't give a fuck about nobody. I don't think they're going to split yet. I don't think they should split at all. But this is Gunther being so ruthless that he'll punch his own mother in the face if he has to. So I enjoyed that. Hey, we got an appearance from Jeff Jarrett yesterday. Nah, unfortunately, we didn't get Ric Flair to come out, beat him up a little bit. You know, we're not going to interpromote that shit, especially with the nervousness of what could happen to Ric Flair in that match. But Jeff Jarrett cutting a promo. You know, I mean, for some people would tell me, I say, hey, he looks good. I'm like, um, we just saw him, <laughs> like, wrestle with GCW. We have saw him attack Ric Flair. We know what he looks like. But Jeff Jarrett, you know, all right. But I still think Sami Zayn may get involved. So uh, yesterday we had a segment with Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey setting up their match. And, man, Ronda even brought down Liv a little bit. The only thing I liked about Liv yesterday, if you go back and you watch her talking to Rhonda, she had her eyes like this. Her eyes, you would have thought that she took some of Tony Khan's stash. Her eyes were like wide open. It, it even hurts for me to have my eyes this wide. You actually go back and you watch it, you'll see Liv Morgan doing that, and I liked it. But when Liv started talking to Rhonda, she was talking in the same pitch as Rhonda, like, it only sounded like she was nasal. You know how Rhonda is. She's like, well, you know, good for you. You took an opportunity and you won in this. And Liv is like, Rhonda, I really appreciate what you're saying. But when it comes to, I'm like, oh, God, please. But then she got the beady eyes. And I was like, okay, that's good. I'm fine with that. Um. Xavier Woods sitting at ringside with Kofi Kingston watching the Viking Raiders beat Shanky and Jinder. We got music change for Jinder. I don't like it. Anyway, they win because of a count out. Throwing him into the New Day. New Day and the Viking Raiders are going to battle next week. Lacey Evans, she was supposed to have a match with Aaliyah. That'll happen next week. I do not like Aaliyah the last three weeks. Made her look like a goof. Lacey Evans cutting a promo last week. You know, because uh, remember, two weeks ago, Aaliyah and Lacey Evans are supposed to team up. And Aaliyah is like, come on, come on, we got a match. Come on. She's like, 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 rapido, come on, come on. What do you? Last week, Lacey Evans cuts a promo, and Aaliyah's just standing there, just letting her say what she wants to say. 
you know, she's looking at the referee like, see what, she, see what she's saying? And she doesn't even, like, do anything about it. She just lets it talk, and then Lacey Evans walks out the ring and doesn't have a match last week. I'm like, good for Aaliyah, you idiot. Storyline. You let her just say what she wants to say. You let her put down the crowd. You don't do nothing about it. You just let her walk out. You deserve it. So what happened yesterday? <laughs> Same thing. Only this time, Lacey knocks her ass out. Good. You let Lacey put down the crowd two weeks in a row, and you just stand there like a goof with the referee. I can't believe she's saying that. Tell me she didn't just say that, and you do nothing about it. You goof. Sheamus segment with Drew. They're having a match next week, and this will finally determine who will face Roman Reigns at Clash at the Castle. little early prediction. Um, look, we've said it three weeks in a row that this was going to come down to the day before SummerSlam. Because it's happening the day before SummerSlam, it almost feels like Drew McIntyre has a match at SummerSlam. Even though no, he doesn't have a match at SummerSlam. You know, that's really what this is all about. This was the scenic route, as we said, three weeks in a row. You know, instead of just announcing, you know, having a match and announcing the winner two, three weeks ago, they want to feel like it's part of SummerSlam weekend. That's why we got it the way we got. And then... uh Street Profits and Madcap Moss, they they beat the Usos in theory. One point theory, you know, backed off from a tag from the Usos. The Usos backed off from a tag from theory. You know, the Usos are not very fond of theory because of theory teasing and cashing in on Roman. Um, but then theory gets himself disqualified, bashes Moss with the briefcase a few times. And this is when, you know, we all expected Brock to come out. Brock just destroys you know, theory. And, uh, you know, that's how they, they went off the air. Do I think things were rewritten over and over and over again? No, I don't think so. I mean, if you really think about it, who else was Brock Lesnar going to attack last night? Really? Is he going to attack the Usos? No, they're not going to do that right before the SummerSlam match with, uh, with the Street Profits. I mean, if you do by process of elimination, who really was Brock Lesnar going to destroy yesterday. Roman was not going to be there. So, you know, it was it was a decent show. Um, on the Rampage side, we had Butcher and the Blade lose to Hangman Page and John Silver. Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter, and I got to show you this. I was laughing about this yesterday. They beat Sky Blue and Ashley DMY. And I noticed something about a lot of the uh, dark women, and I don't mean that in skin color, you know, like the, the women that don't get opportunity yet. Every time they are announced and they're about to be squashed, they always got to look at the camera. They always got to smile. They always got to do their little thing with their hips and their chest. You know, like the, the, what they do is their intro. Like it almost, I said this yesterday, it almost reminds me of when you go to a kennel, you go to a kennel and you want to adopt a dog and you walk past all the cages. And every time you walk past the cage, he, he, oh, look, there's little Ashley, them wild. Like they all got to like look at the cage and act and like make it thing. Instead of just, you, you know how some jobbers, when they're announced, like they'll still be playing with their wristbands and this and that. And oh, in the ring is John Schmuck. And they're just like every single one of these women that are not, on the food chain in AEW, every time they're announced, they're like, they all got to like pose for the TV. Like they're on the cage, like, please adopt me. Tony, please, please adopt me. I'm a baddie. Am I wrong? I watched it yesterday. I'm like, the fuck you smiling about? You know, like they all do that. They all look like the, the, the puppies in the cage. Please adopt me. Please adopt me. All right, we're about to wrap it up. I know it's a little abrupt, but I got to take my fiance to her, her shower. So, uh, you know, it's a big deal. But, um, all right, I do want to leave with one other thing I wanted to see. Other than good day, have a good day. Sound like the LA Beast. Monday, we got a big six man tag match scheduled. Riddle. And the Street Profits versus the Bloodline. That will main event Raw. Shout out to Zyla Deems. Thank you very much for that thumbnail. And uh, 
Oh, believe me, psycho, I will be taking a picture. I'll, in fact, you know what I'll do? I'll shoot some video of us walking into the restaurant, and then, you know, I'll post it later on so you can see. Oh, she's going to be crying like a baby when she sees all the women there. So half those envelopes are mine, though. Fuck that. Best wishes go out to Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho suffered a broken nose during the, that's remember when he hit the chair he did break his nose now that picture don't look all that bad but this one does yeah he legit broke his nose in the match so uh yeah best wishes to chris jericho look i i watched back that match i don't know man i think sometimes they try to do too much you know and Unfortunately, when things go bad, they go bad. I mean, that ending with Eddie Kingston and Guevara and Jericho. I mean, Jericho and Guevara started locking up. I watched that back, and I'm like, it, it's almost like comedy. It's not supposed to be funny, though. It was not funny. Near, oh, he left. He just sent a super chat. Go, got to go. 11 a.m. is awesome. Yeah, I think, I think we are going to bring this back next week, 11 a.m., in the comment section, if you enjoy 11 a.m., let me know. I think that is the sweet spot. That's the G spot for this show. I think next week, 11 a.m. Now, remember, next Saturday is SummerSlam. So I'm going to come up 11 a.m. I'm going to do quick SummerSlam predictions because for most of us, SummerSlam will be over by the time you see the show. But we'll do a regular Don Tony show next Saturday morning. Uh, I will spend five minutes doing predictions. But we, there's going to be a lot of other stuff to cover. So, yes, expect a regular episode of the Don Tony Show next Saturday morning. And um, that's it. So a few other topics we'll get into tomorrow. You know, anything that we really need to cover that we didn't do today, we'll get into tomorrow on the sit-down. It starts at 8 o'clock. On Monday, we will do the giveaway for the baddest woman on the planet and the baddest, oops, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Tyson, the baddest man on the planet. That's what the giveaway is yesterday. We were going to do a Vince giveaway and a John Laurinaitis giveaway, but we didn't get the numbers that I was hoping. So, But uh, shout out to everybody who did show up yesterday. The wheel on Monday is going to be insane. The wheel is going to be so many listings on there. Hopefully, I didn't leave anybody out. It's not easy to monitor when people come in and come out. People that only showed up for a minute, they won't be on the wheel. but. Everyone, have a great Saturday afternoon. And if you enjoyed today's show on the way out, smash that thumbs up. It is always appreciated. If you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe. It's free. And if you want to consider becoming a channel member, you know, we do giveaways with pay-per-views. You know, if you're an elite member, you get the Patreon show that I do every Tuesday. And uh, we got a few other things that we do, especially when we, oh, and next Thursday is the Q&A. It will be pre-recorded. So uh, I will get into that tomorrow, and we'll plug it all during the week. So we got a few shows beforehand. So, But, uh, hey, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Much love. If you're around Sunday night at 8.05 p.m. Eastern, stop by. Tomorrow is all chat, Q&A, and whatever is on your mind, we will talk about it. If you got any feedback about Vince, remember, you know, anything in the chat, we will talk about tomorrow. You're not required to super chat. So you, your voice will be heard tomorrow. So just uh, get on your mind what you want to talk about, what you want to vent about, what you want to ask me, and we'll get into it. So uh, I wonder if she, she's dressed yet. I, I'm like, hey, are you dressed? She's getting dressed. Okay. No, nothing. We're going to go out for brunch. She knows, but she's acting like she doesn't know. All right, um, if you follow me on Twitter, at Don Tony D, uh, you'll check out all the sausage that I wrote the last week. Pretty, pretty funny to see it as it's going down. And I will post a little video later of, for her surprise, just so you know that I'm not making it up. So, guys, gals, it's been real. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I hope you're around tomorrow night, 8.05 p.m. Join me The sit down. Don Tony, out. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. 
To me, those goody-good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just took it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the hosts. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup. And I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.